guys welcome to summer shorts again this week and uh, do you ever when you were growing up uh, maybe even like recently uh, been in PE class or recess and and they want to have a game or something and so they decide to pick teams they get a captain uh, for each team and then you stand there and you wait as you are picked for a team you ever been there like dodgeball or kickball or basketball or something like that. Uh, it happens all the time. It happened back in my day uh, too. And uh, you know, usually people will go and they'll pick somebody with a lot of athleticism and things like that. And you know, if you're one of those people, you got picked first all the time. But a lot of us, uh, it was kind of an anxiety filled thing like, Will they pick me? Will they see that I could be valuable to this team or not? Uh, what will happen? When will I get picked? Will I get picked last? All those things go through your head. Well, today's story is about a time where God had a job and he was going to pick somebody and this is what happened. So Israel needs a new king because the, the current king has let his people down and let God down too. And so God sends out uh, one of his uh, preachers, one of his prophets, uh, Samuel, to get the job done. And here is the story from the Old Testament book of First Samuel. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. And so fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be the king. But Samuel said, how can I do that? If Saul hears about me, about it, he'll kill me. Uh, Take a heifer with you, the Lord replied, and say, you've come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed, and he came to the town, and the elders were trembling. What's wrong, they said, do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel said, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves, come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them too. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one. Next, Jesse Samuel summoned Shemiah and Samuel said, neither is this one. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord hasn't chosen any of these. Then Samuel said, are these all the sons you have? Well, they're still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and the goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down till he arrives. So Jesse sent, sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil, olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day forward. So Samuel goes, ah, Eliab. First guy he sees and he's like, that's the dude. I mean, he looks like a king. He looks like every, every bit of what I would, would think a king was supposed to look like. And God quickly stops him and says, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. You're looking at outward appearance. You're looking at things that really don't matter, uh, that will fade away. God says, I look at the heart. What makes somebody who they are? What's important to them? Uh, what, what, what are they like at their very core? That's the kind of stuff that God valued. And that's the kind of stuff God was looking for in this king. And so he, uh, he rejects all seven of David's other brothers, says, no, 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 no. These guys are not it. And finally, Samuel's like, is this it? Is there anybody else? And and even David's dad is like, well, yeah, there's the there's the youngest, but he's we we sent him off in the field. He's out with the sheep. Uh, we we just we put him out there because you know we didn't want to bother you with him. And Samuel goes, you need to bring him in because I have a feeling 
that might be the pick. And sure enough, David, the kid that everybody else said, uh, you go out in the field and, and hang out there because you're, you're definitely not it. David's God's pick because David, uh, David had a heart that God loved. David had a heart that was after God. It says another part of the Bible. Um, and that is what God was looking for. So a couple things I get from this that I think are really neat. One is I think God looks at us and maybe other people would look at us and say, unlikely pick, unlikely pick, not somebody that I would pick to do this, or maybe not somebody I would pick at all. And God looks at each of us and he says, I pick you. I pick you. I see your value. I see what you're made of. I see uh, beyond what other people might see. I pick you. That's what God says to each and every one of us. He values us. He sees us. He picks us. We're that important to him. Another thing I think is really cool about it that we ought to think about, and that maybe a challenge for all of us, is if God looks beyond what we are on the outside, what people can see on the outside, if God looks at our heart, if he looks at what makes us who we are down at our very core, then maybe we need to start working on that a little more than we do everything on the outside. Because um, we put a lot of time into that kind of thing. But maybe we need to start spending a little more time on what makes us us, on the things of the heart, of the things that are important to God. Maybe we need to start working on that a little more. I know that's a challenge that this story gives to me. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next week on Summer Shorts.